Hey guys, welcome to Jack Packs. Today I'm going to bring you my first ever champion building guide. And who better to do than Spider himself? So let's get right on into it here. So, first off, I'm going to bring you guys the pleasure of seeing me open my only sacred shard for this for this uh, recording today. Yeah, my only sacred shard. I uh, kind of popped all of them for the 10 times we had last week. I mean, it was Lissandra and... I just couldn't help myself. So I only had a couple to do. I might have gone through a couple yesterday before the recording. So this is what you guys get. Who knows? Maybe we'll get lightning. And it's garbage. Well, okay. Maybe not totally garbage, but... Uh, one of the newer champions. Looks like a pretty decent HP champ. Got big shields. Increase accuracy and increase speed. I probably not going to use this guy anywhere. Cool. So then, right on into the content we were looking for, Spider. So in the Dark Elf faction, we've got Spider. He's probably one of the best debuffers in the game because of this skill right here. So fully booked up, this guy brings 100% chance to land decreased defense on all enemies. As well, he brings 70% chance to place the 15% weaken, which in the game, there's only a handful of people that actually do this skill, especially in AoE. And if you get him sniper, having a 75% chance of bringing a weaken in AoE, it's really, really big. So if you don't have yourself like a Dracomorph or a Venus or uh, your Lydia yet, this guy's going to be really critical for getting through as far as debuffs. The only kind of problem, 5 turn cooldown. That's kind of steep. But I'll show you guys here in a little bit that it doesn't matter as much because a lot of the team compositions you're going to be using have ways to bring that cooldown down to something a little more manageable. So that's the figurehead or the, the leading point of his kit. But up second, he brings decrease attack, big decrease attack, 75% as well if you could pick up the Sniper Mastery. And on a three turn cooldown, as well as decreasing buffs. So if you pair this guy up with like an Arbiter that also strips one turn of buffs, you can remove entire buff sets from your opponents with just these two champions without bringing a champion that fully removes buffs by themselves. So this is actually a big deal, um, and it comes into play a lot if you use him in dungeon content. His A1 also strips buffs at a 75% chance if you pick up a sniper, which that can be really clutch. It's kind of fluff, though. This skill isn't as big of a deal as you would think it is. The dungeon aura is pretty helpful. Um, there are a lot of positions where you, want, you might want to stick him in the lead in your dungeon team to get that extra speed going. It's not as good. I wish it was an all aura or well, maybe an arena aura, but we get what we get here. So that says kit. And I'm just going to go straight on into the places you can use them. So there's going to be two main builds you use this champion. First and foremost, the way that I use him, hold on, pop ups, pop ups, is as an arena debuffer. In my arena setup right now, I'm running him as my, my third going champion right behind Arbiter and Molly. So I'll run a uh, team real quick and show you guys what I'm talking about. And sure, why not? Hopefully we won't get out sped and embarrassed on the stream here. Basically, I've got it on auto. Arbiter goes, speed buffs, gives TM boosts, and does their attack buff. Then Molly follows up with the provoke. Then Spider loads up the debuffs. I'm gonna take it off of auto real quick just so I can show you guys. So we follow up the provoke here. And then his job is just to load up these debuffs. So right off the bat, uh, here's the cutting. It's not a big deal. I run a slower skull crown to allow that. So right off the bat, we've got decreased defense and weaken on three out of four of the targets. So that's, again, showing that 75% chance. Well, that's literally 75% right there. Three out of four of them picked up the weaken debuff. So on the, on the, most of the time, that's going to be fine. That's going to do the job for you. It's going to get you done, get you through what you need to do. He's not quite a Venus or a Dracomorph, but he brings other things in his kit that kind of make up for that. So, over here, and you can also use him obviously in 3v3 arenas. I'm not trying to close the game. The other places you can use him are like Dungeons and Doom Tower. 
there's going to be a slightly different build that I recommend for using them in these places, but for the most part, you can get away with using this character literally everywhere. He brings decreased defense, weaken, decreased attack. Those are the three most important debuffs in this entire video game. So the fact that he brings all three of them in AoE, this guy's an MVP. He's a champion. The earlier you can get him on your account, the more work he's going to do for you. He's going to be able to carry a lot of your teams by bringing all the important or critical debuffs to you. So this is my setup right now. I'm running a standard Seer comp, and I've got him in the team. So normally, his, his five-turn cooldown on his uh, debuffs, his big debuffs, is going to be a bit of a pain in the butt. But if you're running him along Renegade and with Seer, Seer's Karma Burns on, about, on the same cooldown. So as long as you've got him with cooldown reduction, he should be able to bring his debuffs in at the same time. Which I'm going to show you guys here. Because again, this is going to start on auto. I'll try and slow it down to show. But, uh, but for the most part, the important thing is he is by far the fastest person in my team because he's in an arena setup. So he starts off, he loads up the debuffs. As does... My bad L buffs up Karma Burn. The second wave gets a little trickier because, it, but if you notice right off the bat, the first thing he did was load up Decrease Attack. He only landed on three out of five targets, but that's still really good. That's going to make it pretty reliable that I don't get blown up at least on this wave. So right up, right up here, they're going to go cycle through some turns as they get over to Renegade. Renegade reduces the cooldowns. Then. We've got buffs back up, Karma Burn, and we're onto the Dragon. See, you can see that he does work just as well as the AoE debuffer. He's not as reliable because he doesn't bring the leak in, but he brings other things in the rest of his kit that make him pretty good, especially if you just don't have any of the other uh, big debuffer champions that bring decreased defense to weaken. Um, in a setup like this, I highly recommend him. I think he's really, really good. He can get the job done. I'm just going to let this go through on auto. This team, I think it's like an 80% or 90% uh, win percentage on this. There is a chance that I can get super bad luck and uh, this run will fail out with this setup. But it's a pretty low chance. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that my Seer is... Well, she's not amazingly geared. She gets it done, though. For the most part, he's going to sit there and cycle turns, just like everybody else. And he's going to keep up decreased attack, decreased defense, and weaken on the boss here. See, there's the other two. And right now, he's got all three of his debuffs up. And I'm going to note that this is with Master Hexer and Sniper in his build. So sometimes he can pop a three-turn uh, master, his three-turn debuff, which will keep it up for that little interval where he might not have it up otherwise. So. This champion, I was very excited to pull. Uh, I was actually really looking forward to him. I, I might have been more excited about picking him up than I was about miscreated monster, and that's saying something. Uh, for the most part, when I got him, it was also before Lydia. Uh, Lydia didn't exist yet in the game, so I didn't have a decreased defense and weakened champion that I could look forward to in the very near future. So I was thinking... This is basically going to be it. This is going to be my guy for the very longest time, and he has been. Um, he's been reliable debuffer all the way through the game so far. And I will be picking up Lydia, but he brings things that Lydia doesn't, so I'm still going to find uses for him here and there. And because he is a force affinity, you would think that his affinity might get him into trouble sometimes as far as weak hits, but it really doesn't. He, uh, his third ability actually places the debuffs. It's not reliant on a damage dealing ability. So there's no chance that he gets a weak hit and just doesn't place his, his uh, decreased defense and weaken, which is basically the most important part of his build. He can get weak hits on his decreased attack because it's tied to a, an attack move, but that's not really as important. It's not going to typically end your run, um, unless you're running a very, very tip of the knife kind of setup. It was kind of a slow run. Um, I can get down to 244, so actually I literally just got this time with the run that I did to test this team and make sure everything works properly before the video. So from there, I'm going to go right on into talking about how I've built him. And so what's going on here? Yoink. Oh, yoink. Okay, anyhow. 
how I've built him and how I could tell you guys to build him as an earlier or mid-game player and how I would recommend building him if I was just using him for dungeon content and he wasn't my debuffer as, uh, as far as my arena teams go. So I've got him in double perception and speed. The idea is there are two, basically two important stats on this character. His, his accuracy, which in the arena, I've got this as a pretty inflated number. I really need him to land his debuffs in the arena. I need him to land a decreased defense. I need him to land the weaken when it goes off. So having an obnoxious accuracy, it's pretty critical if you're using him as your arena debuffer. The 263 speed, this is basically set up so that he doesn't get cut in after Arbiter. Um, there's a little wiggle room there, whereas Molly doesn't have wiggle room because it's Molly can't get cut in or whatsoever. If Molly gets cut in, they can actually just blow my team up. But he isn't as important. If they take a turn before he does, it's not that big of a deal because their turn is just going to be them a one my Molly and boosting everybody's turn meter. So 262 three speed. As you saw in that dungeon run, though, having him at a very high speed total is going to let him cycle those abilities really quickly and keep all of his debuffs up the entire fight. I did get him at 100% crit, but this isn't actually that important. Um, his damage output is pretty negligible. His multipliers are kind of meh. He's not really going to be there for damage. If you can get him to a decent amount of crit rate, it's a luxury. Realistically, what you need to focus on, especially if you're an early or mid-game player, is his speed and his accuracy. If you can get these two stats to where they're in a super comfortable spot, the next stat I'd be looking at is his HP. So that's going to go into what type of chest and what kind of gloves you put on him. I have him in accuracy and crit rate because he's an arena champion. If I was using him exclusively for dungeons, this would be an HP chest and these would be HP gloves. You really just need him to be super bulky. You need him to not die during the, the arena or during the dungeon runs. Which you saw in that run there though, if he has a good amount of support, you can get away with a much leaner build on this guy, especially since he's bringing decreased attack to be able to debuff the damage they're putting out. I have him in speed boots. These are basically a necessity 100% of the time on this champion. If you can get him in some good speed boots with a bit of accuracy, that's the best way to go. There really isn't even another way, another set of boots that I would recommend for this character. Everything else is just basically fluff. It's accuracy, speed, accuracy, speed, and accuracy, and speed. I'm sure you're noticing the recurring theme here. He needs those two stats. And then after that, I did get his crit rate up to 100%. Again, just kind of to be fancy. His damage, when he A2s, it's not really that important. For the most part, if my team works properly, he doesn't ever do any damage. Skullcrown does. But... Having this number where it's at, it looked, made the build look really clean, and it made me happy. Now, getting into the Masteries, this is a arena setup for him. I have him set up this way because I needed to make sure, again, that his accuracy was as high as obnoxiously possible. I needed to get him in the accuracy talent, and I wanted to get him a bit of defense for just in case he managed to catch a bit of damage. This really isn't important. Um, if anything, I could cover up the defense tree. He could have just one tree and just be fine for the way I'm running here. He needs these accuracy talents here. Sniper and the Laura Steel, or rather, Evil Eye and Laura Steel are pretty important. Master Hexer is pretty useful. But for the most part, it's accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. Accuracy from Laura Steel, Sniper to get that extra 5% on his A3 and his A2. And then accuracy again for his tier 6 talent. That is the most important part of the way that you're building him here. Now, the second way you build him, um, I'm going to put an image here, is you're going to run him with Warmaster. This is a dungeon centric build. If you've managed to get him up to where he has enough accuracy from just your, you know, your gear and your banner alone, you want to run him down the offense tree and pick up War Master so he can actually bring a bit more a bit more damage to the table, which he can do. It's just not really what he's there for. But as long as you're running him as an exclusively dungeon champion, you might as well pick this mastery up and you might as well do some work with it. Uh, other than that, the War Master setup is pretty typical for like a, a dungeon champion. There's a pretty linear path of masteries to go with. Just basically straight down the left 
as with anybody else. And then you pick up War Master, and on the right side you still be taking the support tree, except instead of going all the way down to accuracy, you just pick up Sniper and Master Hexer, and you'd be done in that tree. And that's the way you build him as your dungeon champion, or Doom Tower, if you end up taking him into there, which again, is a great place to take him. Other than that, I could show you how you can use him in a few other places in the game, but it's pretty much the same. He functions the same way across the board. He's just extremely good at what he does, and I highly recommend if you pick this guy up early, build him. Build him and crutch on him, because he's going to be able to carry you and be your primary debuffer everywhere in the video game. Um, and if you put a bit of work into his gear, and take him, you can take him anywhere, and he will carry you. So other than that, I think that's really it. Um, I didn't pull anything fancy in this 10x event, and I don't really think I'm going to uh, if I get another uh, chest out of, or if I get another clan boss chest today. Hopefully I can pull another sacred out of that, but I haven't really had much luck. I kind of guffed up by blowing all of them on the 10, the 10x last week. you got to do it sometimes, though, when they put those super valuable champions in the 10x. I hope you didn't do what I did. I hope you uh, were smart and held on to all your stuff. So, thank you guys for watching. This has just been a spider guide for the uh, Raid Shadow Legends video game. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Talk to you guys later.